this ASCO has been a very exciting meeting, right? And, and not only uh, ASCO, but even the past year, as we've heard with the regular Rafinib data. Uh, Arndt, you were one of the investigators on the, the uh, study with Lenvantinib, comparing it to Serafinib, the first positive study in first-line liver cancer yes. for a decade. Could, could you give us briefly a take-home message from that study? Yeah. So um, these are really great news, and I think this is a clearly positive study. And we have um, already discussed the difference between superiority trials and non-inferiority trials, and what is a positive trial and what is a negative trial. And here we clearly have a positive trial. So this is very good news. Um, when we look at the data that have been presented, and we have just recently seen them, um, the survival with lenvatinib is numerically better than with um, sorafenib, but it did not reach superiority. So this is one point we need to keep in mind. Um, then when we look at the secondary endpoints, I think they were not only statistically um, uh, significantly improved, but they were only also clinically meaningful improved. Specifically, if you look, for example, at, and I mean, there were different um, tests that were, uh, were, were made, um, specifically PFS, time to tumor progression, and response rate. Um, when we look at TTP with sorafenib, a little bit as expected, TTP was 3.7 months. With um, lenvatinib, it was more than eight months. So there's a clear um, signal of stronger activity. And also, when we look at response rate, we have an increase from 8% to 24%. By modified resist. By modified resist. Not the traditional resist that right. looks at shrinkage of tumor, but right. decrease in the amount right. of enhancement. Right. So, but what we also have to say, of course, that these are secondary endpoints. And you could argue, so if overall survival is not improved, what do these secondary endpoints mean? Therefore, I think we really need to critically look at these data. And what we have already seen and what has been reported is that there are some imbalances. For example, there were more patients with hepatitis C that received sorafenib. And we do know that um, patients with hepatitis C respond very well um, to sorafenib. And the median overall survival of these patients in the trial was 14 months, which was um, very good. And another point of, or another imbalance which was seen was the AFP level. And this has been reported in the um, first presentation. So in the group of patients treated with a sorafenib, more patients with a lower AFP were included. In contrast, more patients with a higher AFP were treated with um, lenvatinib. When we look at these different subgroups, we can clearly see that patient that and this has been confirmed with this trial, that AFP is a prognostic marker. So when, with lenvatinib, for example, patients with a low AFP have a median overall survival of almost 20 months, which is really good. In contrast, patients with a low AFP have a median survival with only, two, uh, with only 10 months. So high AFP. High AFP, sorry. With high AFP have a median overall survival of around 10 months. In both groups, median overall survival was longer with lenvatinib compared to sorafenib. So when you do an adjustment for AFP levels, we do get a significant improvement in overall survival. But this, again, of course, is only a post hoc analysis. It yeah, so does not really make it to a more positive trial as it already is. So at the end of the day, and again, we only saw the data yesterday. We'll wait for the publication. Uh, they seem to be equivalent. Uh, yes. Are there any toxicity differences? I mean, if you look numerically at toxicity, they appear to be very similar. If you just look at the numbers of side effects that occur, we have the typical side effect profile, what we would expect from um, sorafenib with diarrhea, hand, foot, skin reactions, um, fatigue. In contrast with lenvatinib, and this I think is also expected, we see more hypertension and proteinuria. In terms of how this affects quality of life, and I mean, we have also discussed quality of life measurements. I think quality of life is really important, and we have to take the tools we, 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 that are available. And if we look at them, we see that they are, in general, the numbers are very equal for, in terms of quality of life for sorafenib and um, alenvatinib. There are some subgroups that tend to um, are in favor of lenvatinib, which goes hand in hand with a higher incidence of diarrhea, for example, which we see in the side effects. So. so I guess we'll have to see how these data filter in as we learn more from the study. Can you comment the, the difference in terms of an open label versus a double blind trial? To what extent do you think that this is something that has also to be yeah. with? <clears throat> of course, you could argue, I mean, there are two ways of how this could affect it. You could argue that patients Just to, that to, for Jordi's point for the audience, this was not a blinded study. This yeah, was an unblinded study. And you could argue, of course, that patients that are treated with lenvatinib, and currently there are a lot of, uh, with sorafenib, so 
patient and physician knew that they have received sorafenib and they were, of course, candidates for subsequent clinical trials. Not all of these trials in second line were positive, so they might not have derived any benefit from second line trials, but they might have been taken too early off sorafenib, which would be a mistake in this case. But if you look at the reasons for discontinuation of sorafenib in this trial, we do see that more patients have been treated until radiological progression with sorafenib compared to lenvatinib. So I do not think that more patients have been taken off sorafenib too early. The numbers match very well to other data we have seen before. And on the other hand, of course, I mean, some of the patients have been treated with regorafenib that have received um, sorafenib, so they might have derived the benefit in later lines, which right. also have con might have contributed to the longer survival in the sorafenib. So we'll have to, again, dissect these data as they become more widely available.